Let's talk about uh, the empowerment of students. Um, you know, you have these student workshops, so you've, you've of course, communicated with the staff and administration. You've communicated in, and also um, spoken with parents. Um, however, now it's in classroom time. Um, you know, what do these student look, uh, workshops look like? Uh, how do you empower students? Uh, and what's, the, what's that big takeaway uh, message during that time? Well, our programs are positive. They're age appropriate for early childhood, which is preschool and kindergarten students. We have elementary, grades one through five. Mm -hmm. We now have a hybrid program, sixth okay. grade, kind of a combination of elementary, teen cap, and our bullying prevention program that okay. we have. Okay. Bullying prevention program is a follow-up program, and we also entail cyber empowerment with that. Okay. And we have a teen cap program, which can start um, seventh grade and go all the way up into the high schools if the high schools are interested in having that program okay. as well. So with the student workshops, we want to make sure that children understand that they all have rights, basic human rights. But we, in CAP, focus on our motto is all children have the right to be safe, strong, and free. So we discuss that with each of the children. Um, again, age appropriate. So for the younger children, we have um, uh, role plays that we do with the children. We do an unsuccessful role play geared towards uh, peer assault, aggression, bullying, mm -hmm. stranger abduction, and assaults by known adults. Through open guided conversation with the children, we redo them successfully so that they can learn self-assertiveness, peer support, and trusted adults. We want to empower children to be able to recognize a potentially dangerous situation and feel empowered to be able to say no and stop, get their classmates to help them out, and really focus on who these trusted adults can be. So they could be adults from home, mm -hmm. school, or anywhere in the community, which can be difficult for some children, especially if the abuse is stemming from home. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to go outside of the home to, to try to get somebody to help them, which is not always easy for children. Mm -hmm. As far as the teen cat program is concerned, we also, we also focus on their rights, but more of a personal safety right for them. And we talk about different types of abuse that can happen, different types of assaults, and the choices that they can make about their own body. And also focusing on um, their rights, but they, we want them to recognize potentially dangerous situations more, again, age appropriate for them, because it's gonna be different than the younger children. Yeah and uh, the forces that they're gonna face, whether it's their peers or a force that they put upon themselves, um, force of authority, but we want them to know that they have choices that they can make, and even with um, cyber empowerment, we wanna let them know that you know, once they hit that send button, these, the, these things, these images could be out there forever, so mm -hmm. we want them to know what their legal responsibility is for that, as well as the emotional trauma that, can, that could affect them. Uh, with all, all the children, no matter what age group we're working on, we also introduce age-appropriate self-protection techniques. We want them okay. to know from preschool all the way up to teen, and it, and it gets a little more intense into the teen section, mm -hmm. on what they can do physically to get away from imminent danger. Uh, we also teach children that they have the right to come out to our review time session, which is strictly voluntary. Okay. So it allows them the opportunity to come out and ask us any questions or make any comments in regards to the program. So at that time, we want to make sure specifically that they understood everything that they learned in the workshop. More importantly, we want to know that they have trusted adults that they can talk to. Okay. Again, whether it be at home or school or someone in their community. So the classroom student portion and workshop very comprehensive yes um, so so based off of what you just explained I mean I've, I've seen this take place um, and and the feedback has been outstanding um, from the program I'm also thinking right now though for our viewers um, they're not able to see what that looks like so what you just explained was very important but they may also now have a question in regards to how do they as trusted adults um, possibly recognize if a student um, may have been a victim of a assault. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're starting at a, at a very young age. So we're looking at extreme or sudden behavior changes. So these might be behaviors that we typically don't see in our children. So abused children can often be overly compliant. So we might have an educator that would like all their children to be compliant in the classroom, mm -hmm. but they take it to an extreme. Okay. Because the slightest inf inf 
infraction or a misinterpretation of a rule could be met with severe punishment um, to the point of abuse. Okay. They could also be very withdrawn. They could be overly aggressive, which means they could be overly aggressive with their peers in, in a school environment situation. They could be uh, affectionless, which we can understand if a sexual assault takes place that they're yeah. affectionless, but overly affectionate is because um, it's introduced early on sexual learned behavior. So okay. other people might look at that as seductive behavior, but it could be because it's learned early on sexual behavior. Okay. Um, we also have activity and habit clues. So it could be reoccurring nightmares, violent nightmares about a particular place or person. Uh, might involve children lying. Children do lie. Mm -hmm. Children lie to get out of trouble, not to get into trouble. They could be lying to protect themselves, another sibling. Children uh, research has sh shown that they will lie less than half of a 1%. So if they're lying, we need to take a look at that. What okay. is going on in the family dynamics for a child to have to make that choice as means of survival to lie about something? And then we have educational concerns. Okay. So it could be um, academic failure, sleeping in class, inability to, to concentrate, which could fall under neglect, but it also could be a learning disability that maybe hasn't been actually discovered yet by school personnel or even home. Okay. Um, and then we have emotional indicators. Could be depression. Now, typically we think depression would start as an adolescent age, but it could start as young as four and five if something traumatic happened in their lives, such as a sudden death in the family, which we've had kids mm -hmm. tell us that. Yeah. I mean, for adults, it's hard for us to fathom that. Imagine a five-year-old or a four-year-old having to try to process that. Yeah. A parent died suddenly. We've been told that. Mm -hmm. So that's very difficult for children to try to process that. Um, also, um, they could be... Uh, self-inflicting injury upon themselves, which doesn't necessarily mean that a child is suicidal, but it is a reach for help. Chronic ailments uh, could be stress-related. Mm -hmm. So it could be irritable bowel syndrome, it could be eating disorders, all of that falls under a stress-related, especially if it's emotional abuse, because emotional abuse is very difficult to see, unlike physical abuse. Physical abuse is causing injury or harm to a child, but other than accidental means. So children do receive broken bones, burns, um, welts. Um, they look at frequency and severity of it. More importantly, we want to make sure that the injury is fitting the story. Okay. For example, a child had burn marks on the bottom of their palms, and they said they tripped and they fell into the stove. So this is something... this whatever happened took place is not really making any sense. So we want to ask those questions. Because as adults, we try to use back burners. We don't use front burners. We mm -hmm. don't have them exposed. That actually could be placement. That could actually be considered discipline for that particular child. Okay. So again, making sure that the injury fits the stories is, is real key. The younger they are, it's very difficult for them to articulate. So they are going to show through a behavior. And mm -hmm. that's why emotional abuse is one of the hardest ones to prove.